some believe in eating anything.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Psalm 114. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back? O mountains, that you skip like rams, or hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. 
and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. It has been such a long time since we were able to welcome each other in this place. And it seems like a lifetime ago when you first welcomed me to St. Martin's, even though it was only six short months ago. So much has happened in our world. And yet, there have been many ways in which we have seen goodness and hospitality in action. Our Silver Linings newsletter has been a way of showing us the goodness and kindness that exists in our world. It has sparked so much joy for so many of us, myself included, and I am so grateful for all the work that went into this publication. I think about how we have had to change the ways we show welcome towards others. Gone are the traditional methods which we have greeted each other and interacted with each other. Instead, we have come to rely on alternate actions such as peace signs, words, and on technology and other gestures to convey our sentiments. I have friends who have picked up calligraphy in order to send handwritten notes to one another and mail them out so that people can stay connected. Eating with others in front of video conferencing applications seems much more familiar to us than it ever has before. We've celebrated milestones virtually more as a rule than a rare exception used when family or friends are scattered globally. Meeting virtually for church has become a way to remain connected to God and to each other. And this will continue. We have adapted and adjusted, and we will continue to do so as needed. It is fitting that our epistle reading today focuses on unity and hospitality, and what that looks like when there are different viewpoints and understandings. We continue with our letter to the Romans this week, and the Apostle Paul is urging the community to focus on their similarities rather than their differences. You see, the church in Rome was unique in significant ways. Rome was, of course, considered the epicenter of Roman society and Western civilization at the time. And it had a variety of people of all different backgrounds and different social statuses. The early churches in Rome reflected that diversity, so there were many different views and understandings, especially with understanding the best way to follow and understanding the scriptures and teachers of Jesus. Indeed, the Apostle Paul is telling the church in Rome that despite the many differences that exist within their worldview, they needed to use understanding and compassion when relating to each other. The Apostle Paul points out that it is important to welcome those who may not see things the way that we do. The example he uses has to do with food. Food rules in the ancient world were very specific and varied depending on a person's cultural background and circumstance. Since ancient Rome was a melting pot of cultures, there were many different viewpoints and beliefs. And even though people were now united under the banner of being a Christian, they came with their own beliefs and understandings when it came to food, both regarding its preparation and consumption. Some abstained from meat, others ate all types of food. But the Apostle Paul wanted people to know that despite their differences, they were welcome at God's own table. God welcomes all people, and as followers of Jesus, we are called to welcome others the way that we are welcomed. 
The Apostle Paul is telling people not to judge others because under God, we are one and united. And even though there were cultural and personal differences, we are called to treat others with understanding. We all have individual consciences that we follow, and that helps us to determine how best we can live out our faiths and beliefs. We answer to God, and what we do is for God's glory. Through Jesus Christ, we have the freedom and the knowledge of how to live authentically without our faith. What we are called to do as followers of Jesus is to learn to understand those who may live or practice their faith differently from us. I grew up following a different Christian tradition and came to the Anglican Church later in life. There were many differences between these traditions, yet one thing remained the same. The truth of Jesus remained the same. And even though I had to learn the traditions and customs of the Anglican Church, the truth of Jesus and our triune God remained the same. This means that I did not have to search for an understanding of the Trinity, as this truth was present and visible in the Anglican Church. And indeed, when I invited friends to church with me, while I was going through my discernment for ordination in the Anglican Church, the most popular comment I would get would be that they didn't really understand the traditions, they didn't really get it, but they got the Jesus bit, so that was okay. And I share this story because I really want us to think about how we understand differences in unity, especially in this age of COVID-19. While we wear a mask to protect others in public, there are very many people who are not yet comfortable with returning to public spaces for the foreseeable future, even though many places have mandated the use of masks. And that is perfectly okay. This is because we are united in wanting to protect others in our community, and that will look different for everyone. For those who do not want to yet return right away, we have the opportunity to show new ways of welcome and hospitality to them and to each other. Our call as followers of Jesus remains the same. We love our neighbors as ourselves and remember that all we do is for God's glory. We prepare to partake of the Eucharist for the first time since mid-March. And while we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the sacrament, let us ponder for a moment on those who are part of our community who are not yet able to be with us and partake of the Eucharist yet. They are still a vital part of our community and we hold space for them in our minds during this time. While we wait for the day that we can gather in larger numbers, for now, let us continue on united, even when we are physically distant, in our call to be a community to serve God together. Let us also look at this time with a sense of renewal. May we be renewed by Jesus in all that we do. Let us who are gathered together take up the sacrament and reflect on the new ways that God may be calling us to show welcome and hospitality to others during this time. Regardless of whether we are here in person or we're watching on YouTube, may we go forward united as a community that focuses on following God through living out our Christian faith. Let us look to God in all things and show God's grace to others in our world. May we continue to be a people who welcome others the way that God welcomes us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Spirit, 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Together in God's presence, let us pray to our Lord and respond saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Shelley, our minister, and our bishops, Linda, Andrew, and Rosilla. We ask for your blessing, Lord, on all members of our parish family, and in the week ahead, particularly the families of Mary Mann, Wilf and Diane Marshall, Felicity Martin, Ed and Marlene Matthews, and Rob, Tammy, Callie, and Caitlin Mackay. For all, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by COVID-19, for healthcare and frontline workers, for all who are affected by the wildfires on the U.S. West Coast, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your blessing on those in need, particularly Larice da Costa, Reed, and Rosie Feesby, as well as those we carry in our hearts, we pray to you, Lord. For a blessing on those who are celebrating birthdays, including Tammy Mackay, and those who are celebrating anniversaries, including John and Barbara Todd Hunter, we pray to you, Lord. Lord on the anniversary of her death, we remember Rita Clyde, and that the departed may enjoy eternal peace, we pray to you, Lord. All these are prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Father God, accept all we offer you this day. May we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone our God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath, we praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of Ethan, into the future. 